We begin with a review of the anatomy and physiology of this system. The layers of the epidermis from its surface to base are stratum corneum, stratum lucidum, stratum granulosum, stratum spinosum, and stratum basalis. You can remember this with the mnemonic Californians like girls in string bikinis. Epithelial cells have various types of junctions. The zona occludens is a tight junction made up of cloudens and occludens that prevent diffusion. Zona adherens is an intermediate junction made up of cadherens connecting to actin just below the zona occludens. The macula adherens is a desmosome made up of cadherens connecting to intermediate filaments forming small focal sites of attachment. Gap junctions allow adjacent cells to communicate for metabolic and electric functions. And the hemidesmosome connects cells to their underlying extracellular matrix. Now let's take a look at topics related to muscle that are likely to show up on the USMLE Step 1 exam. Let's start by taking a look at the rotator cuff muscles. A group of four shoulder muscles form the rotator cuff. The supraspinatus for abduction, the infraspinatus for lateral rotation, the teres minor for adduction and lateral rotation, and the subscapularis for adduction and medial rotation. You can remember these with the mnemonic SITS with a small t for teres minor. The hand contains a complex group of muscles with various functions. The thenar muscles include opponens pollicis, abductor pollicis, and the flexor pollicis brevis. The function of this can be remembered through an abbreviation formed from the first letter of each word, which may stand for oppose, abduct, flex. The hypothenar muscles are the opponens digiti minimi, the abductor digiti minimi, and the flexor digiti minimi. These can also be remembered with oaf. Oppose, abduct, flex. The dorsalis interosseous muscle can be remembered to abduct the finger or dab, and the palmar interosseous muscle adducts the fingers or pad. The lumbrical muscles flex at the metatarsal phalangeal joints. The brachial plexus is a complex arrangement of nerves emanating from the cervical spine to the neck and into the axilla, all controlling the movements of the upper extremity. From central to peripheral, the brachial plexus is made up of roots, C5 to T1, trunks, upper, middle, and lower, divisions, the cords, lateral, posterior, and medial, and branches, axial nerve, radial nerve, musculocutaneous nerve, median nerve, and ulnar nerve. You can remember this order with the mnemonic, Randy Travis drinks cold beer. The radial nerve, also known as the great extensor nerve, innervates the following muscles. Brachioradialis, extensors of the wrist and fingers, supinator, and triceps. You can remember this with the mnemonic BEST. There are two basic methods of bone formation. Endochondral ossification, 
chondrocytes form cartilage, which is replaced with osteoclasts and osteoblasts, to form woven bone, which is later remodeled into lamellar bone. Endochondral ossification is responsible for longitudinal bone growth. The second method is membranous ossification. Osteoclasts and osteoblasts form woven bone in the absence of cartilage, which is later remodeled into lamellar bone. Membranous ossification is responsible for flat bone growth, such as seen with the skull, facial bones, and axial skeleton. Now, let's briefly review the steps involved in muscle contraction. From muscle conduction to contraction, the steps are an action potential depolarization opens voltage-gated calcium channels, inducing neurotransmitter release. Postsynaptic ligand binding results in muscle cell depolarization of the motor end plate. Depolarization moves along muscle cell and down the T-tubule. Depolarization of the voltage-sensitive dihydropyridine receptor connected to the ryanidine receptor on the sarcoplasmic reticulum induces a conformational change, causing calcium release. Released calcium binds to troponin C, causing a conformational change that moves tropomyosin out of the myosin binding groove on actin filaments. Myosin releases bound ADP and is displaced on the actin filament. Contraction results in H and I band shortening, with the A band remaining the same length. Skeletal and cardiac muscle go through the following steps during contraction. A cocked state, which undergoes conformational change to allow actin-myosin cycling. Cross-bridged state, which then loses PI. Power stroke state, which then loses ADP and picks up ATP, which causes cross-bridge cycling and muscle shortening and the released state, which will cycle back to the cocked state. The following series of steps are responsible for smooth muscle contraction. Action potential, membrane depolarization, opening of voltage-gated calcium channels, which causes an increase in calcium in the cytoplasm. The calcium then binds to calmodulin, and there is activation of myosin light chain kinase, or MLCK. Myosin P and actin combining results in cross bridge formation and muscle contraction. The myosin light chain phosphatase removes phosphate, and the myosin plus actin results in muscle relaxation. The presence of MLCK promotes cycling back to myosin P plus actin, and steps 7 through 10 continue in a loop.